George Romack and I were at Ralph Miller's party that night because he'd received a threatening letter. And we tried to watch everyone who came anywhere near the high-pressure stock promoter. It was Bill Tedro and Arnold Bowser, Miller's wife, Tina, and his engineer, Vincent Posedale, Dr. Johnson, his personal physician, and finally, Seth Mullaney, who was having a drink with a threatened man. Only six who were anywhere near Miller that night, just before it happened. They say a man only gets one chance to make it big. I don't hold to that. I'm opening the door for you again, Seth. Well, it slammed shut in my face pretty hard before, Mr. Miller. I don't know whether my nose could take it a second time. <laughs> Didn't hurt your eyes any, did it? How do you mean? There's gold there this time. You saw it yourself. Thousands of nuggets, just sitting there like chubby little orphans waiting to be adopted. And day after tomorrow, I launch a public sale of stock in this strike. Don't get left behind, Seth. about this yesterday. man receives a murder note. It doesn't make sense for him to throw a big party the next day. Especially when you admit that half the people you invited could have sent this note. I'm putting a big campaign into motion. Nothing gets in the way of that. Your death would. That's why you're here, isn't it? To see that that doesn't happen. I can't without your help and information. Like what? Like why this note accuses you of murder. Let me tell you something, Smith. When a man climbs to the top, he has to crawl over some others. That means some of them may fall. You finished, Doctor? Yes, however, I don't recommend any more shocks of this kind. I can't guarantee your heart will withstand them, Mr. Miller. You tell him that, not me. Two more days, Smith. And then what? Then I call in my own police force. You bring any hired guns into town, Mr. Miller. They wind up in jail. Well, Smith, are you through talking to my wife? Send her up here, huh? I want to share in her happiness in knowing that I'm still alive. <laughs> Dr. Johnson said my husband's out of danger. Yes, ma'am, I suppose he is. He wants to see you. Thank you. What now? Pay your money? 
money and take your choice? Well, we only have to pick one out of six, George. What's the matter? You lose count, Smitty? There's more than 20 people here tonight. Only six of them are close enough to Miller to poison that drink. He had other drinks, though. Perhaps if that drug works, he would have shown it immediately if he'd been poisoned earlier. You pick him out, then, and I'll collar him. It wouldn't help us very much. I want to talk to Miller again after he calms down. You stick here tonight. Tomorrow, when he gets to feeling better, you bring him into the office. Smitty, you figure that note he got's telling the truth? I don't know. If it is, we'll have to try to keep a murderer from being murdered. You know, it seems there's something unlawful about that. Ride all the way in town just because he wants to talk, huh? We'll talk all right. We'll talk about my plans for handling this affair. Now, what you getting so riled up at Smitty for, Mr. Miller? Because I never could stand incompetence, that's why. Now, if there's one thing I'd say Smitty never had too much of, that'd be it. George. You know, it's a darn good thing you didn't grow an inch taller during the night, Mr. Miller. It's the way this gun's angled. Who else had a key to that tack room? No one. This is the only key there is. How many at that party would know about that? I couldn't say. Most of those people have been out to my ranch many times before. What's this? One of those six people poisoned your drink. How do you know? I was there, remember? No one else was close enough. You got my wife's name on this list. I gathered last night you're not too close. You gathered right. We're about as close as our ages. Well, poison is a woman's weapon, but <laughs> rigging that gun, I don't know. You don't know her. And sending that note would give her just about the kind of kick she likes. That's a pretty big chance to take just for kicks. You still got it up here. Maybe I did a killing, huh? Did you? I've had about enough out of you, Smith. If my wife sent that note, I'll find out. If any of these others did, they'll be taken care of, too. Five of the people on this note are innocent. Any harm comes to any one of them, I'm going to hold you responsible. You better get some action fast. I could put you in jail and hold you in protective custody until the time limit runs out. That's impossible. I'm launching a stock sale in a big mining venture. I'm not going to delay matters and discourage potential buyers. One more day of him, and you can add my name to that list. You just stick with him, George. Who knows? Maybe he'll let you in on a little of that gold stock. <laughs> That'll be the day. I had made an intensive investigation of Miller's past. His life read like an open book the first chapter is torn out. For 12 years, he'd been famous for his stock, land, and mining promotions. Before that, nothing. He's not here yet. See, there's Vincent Posdale. You know, that's real interesting. Miller's getting ready to start his campaign, the most important man in his pitch. Mining engineers, nowhere around. What's about it? If you wanted to kill Miller today, wanted to be miles away when it happens, how would you do it? You mean a bomb? Well, Dale's a mining engineer. He knows explosives. He's not here.
There's a bomb on here. What is this? What's going on here? There's a bomb right on you, Miss Miller. Get out of here, George. You too, Chief. Now, Chief. What kind is it? I don't know, George. It looks like some sort of an acid reactor. Smith, you've got to find the one who did this. Whoever it is must be loco. Chief, you've got to get him. We will. You better stick with me, Mr. Miller. Looks like you were right about Posto. You better go pick him up. I was just leaving for town. <laughs> that figures. You must have wanted Miller awful bad to be willing to blow up half the town to get him. What's he talking about? This bomb planted under that platform. Where'd you say it was? You ought to know. Right under Miller's seat. Whoever put it there made a serious miscalculation. This bomb could have never exploded. Not nearly enough nitric acid to eat through the plate. Whoever made this bomb didn't know much about acid. Why weren't you at the sale, Paul's Dale? Miller knows why. If you don't mind, I'd like to know why. Well, that selling of the mining stock was a bit premature. What do you mean? It's my belief that the strike we made is all on the surface. Did he salt that mine? No, no, he didn't have to. Top was good enough. But he wouldn't let me take any more samplings. Yesterday, I told him to get another engineer. And you why? Just what do you mean by that? Why don't you ask her to come out? Stop it! Stop it! Please, Smith, don't take her in. Miller will kill her. He knows about you two? There's nothing to know. But he won't think so if you take us in together. I wonder what he'll think if you take a trip together. Well, sure, I was leaving, but alone. It's no use, Vincent. They'll find my things in the carriage. Let's go. Smith, I swear to you, neither of us had anything to do with trying to murder Miller. Hold it, Miller. That's right, Smith. She's all yours now. Posedale, you not only wanted to kill me, you tried to ruin my good name, too. 
I didn't send you that note, Miller. You mean he hasn't confessed yet? I wouldn't worry about that. Well, you cost me a lot today. Well, it's going to cost you a good price, too. About 20 years. I hope you have a lot of fun together with all those bars between you. <laughs> My door. Well, it looks like your wife and Posdell are going to have a shorter sentence than you figured. They've been under arrest since noon yesterday. And the other four were at that gathering, so one of them had planted the bomb. They would know they were endangering their own lives. How can you be so sure which one of them did it? You said there were six people close enough to poison my drink. How do you know it was one of those six? If Smitty says there were only six people, he can take his word for it. You didn't meet any of those six people before you came to Denver. Not that I remember. Well, one of them sure remembers meeting you. Doesn't seem to like the memory very much. Eight o'clock. Giving himself just three hours to wipe out that memory. Well, what are you going to do? Just leave them loose until 11 o'clock so they can kill me? Why didn't you arrest them? Throw them in jail. Exactly what we planned to do. I think you better stay right here, too. That's all right with me. Put Mr. Miller in cell three, Jim. But the officer found no one at home at Bill Tedrow's house. The place was deserted. George Romack arrived at Mulaney's ranch to find that the owner had ridden off an hour before. Joe Forbes drew a blank at Arnold Bowser's place. And I'd had the same result when I'd called to bring in Dr. Johnson. What do you mean you couldn't find them? You've got to find them. Take it easy. I promise you'll have every possible protection. Some protection. I better stay in with him, Chief.
Marshal. Be well protected, Mr. Miller. Signed a full confession. He still doesn't know who it was he killed on that train. I want to thank all of you for your patience, and especially you, Mulaney, for playing along with us. You've no idea how hard it is to hide out in this town when the whole Denver police force is trying to arrest you. I'm glad to hear that. Well, it worked, Doctor. How did you know? I checked into your background. I found out about that train robbery and your uncle. What made you suspicious of me? Three attempts on a man's life, and they all failed. Purposely. I didn't want to kill him. Just frightened him into confessing. But I still don't see how you guessed it was me. Who else around here would know more about chemicals and drugs than a doctor? Crenshaw was what you said about Miller's heart. After all I saw him go through, he suffered everything but a heart attack. There's something I have to know. Who wrote that second note to Miller? Well, after I became convinced that the man who wrote the first one was only trying to get Miller to confess, I decided to help. So I used the best weapon against a man possible. The man himself. <laughs> <laughs> 